let's talk about threaded plumbing connections or specifically leaking ones. Two ways to fix that problem and one way you should probably not use to fix that problem. So first of all, here we have a plumbing connection right there. So we have a female thread and then we have a male thread going into it. It's got some thread sealant around it right now, some plumber's tape or Teflon tape or PTFE or lots of different names for it, but it's a thread sealant on there and it's leaking right now, wouldn't you know? So, so many people are going to reach to a product like this. Repair putty, two-part epoxy, like one just smear it all over the place and it solidifies on there and hopefully solves your leaking pipe problem, right? Don't do that. Don't, and the reason why you don't do that is there's a high likelihood it won't solve your problem. Very high likelihood. And even if it does solve your problem, there's a good chance that even that will be a temporary solution. But now you've applied some gunk to the situation here that you now would need to remove before you can do any further remediation of that area. Like probably you have to cut it out. It's kind of like a permanent, you know, attempt at a repair. And if it doesn't work, now you have a much bigger problem on your hands because we can't just you know, unthread this one way or another, we're going to have to do more extensive work, probably cut and replace some, you know, pieces here. I'm just holding a small uh, threaded brass connection, but what if it was something bigger, like a large brass valve that's going to be expensive, you know, and now you're going to have to replace it because you gunked it up with that permanent repair epoxy. That's not the move that you want to go to. If you want to fix a leaking threaded connection in plumbing for a pressurized system of any kind, you have to disassemble the system. You're going to have to cut into the system. Some have unions that you could just thread open. More commonly, you have to cut into the system. And this is whether it's PEX or copper or ABS or PVC or whatever the case is for a threaded connection that's leaking to fix it properly, you have to open the system. So you just commit to doing that. Now let's talk about how we're going to fix that threaded connection. First of all, I want to strip off all that old tape there if I can. I'm happy with that. There we go. It's a little oxidized with age, but the threads run clear, so that's great. Two options to do this properly. One, that plumber's tape or Teflon tape is actually a great option. It will totally work. So hold the threads in your left hand, tape in your right hand, and we're just going to wrap over the top. Oops. Four, five. Pinch, pull. There we go. Ready to go again with that connection. It's not, a, it's not a hand tight situation, but it starts by going hand tight. Okay, and now we get some wrenches on there and we turn that another half turn, a full turn or more. And that's going to be a threaded connection which can receive pressure and will reliably consistently not leak. But let's say it does. Sometimes, sometimes there's problems. Maybe you can't see it. There's a defect. There's a little burr on the pipe or something like that. And it's allowing the water to chase along. This does happen sometimes. So I could use the next solution here on its own, or I could use it along with this plumber's tape. It's kind of dealer's choice here. Both will work. Boy, I did a really good job of getting that on there. Okay, ready to start again here. So with or without the Teflon tape, I'm gonna go without first. Silicone, type one silicone. There's a bunch of kinds out there. Type 1 silicone is 100% silicone. There's nothing added to it. And the best thing about this is it's really easy to work with in terms of like making a threaded connection. It is reliable in terms of if you let it set up for the requisite amount of time, which will it will indicate if you just read the label of the silicone that you have, usually 24 hours. If you just make a threaded connection by applying silicone all the way around, Basically, just put some on the threads and then take your finger and smear it around. You want a little extra. You don't want to have not enough, but you don't also don't want silicone everywhere. So, you know, with moderation and with them on the male threads, you don't actually need to apply them to the female threads. There will be enough on the male threads. Thread in, hand tight. You can, you can put wrenches on this now. 
with silicone on here, the friction has been reduced. You'll have already turned it further by hand than you did last time. And if we put wrenches on it, you're going to get a, get a little more turn on that, but you will experience what's called galling. And that's just where the metals are binding together here from friction. You simply can't turn it anymore, but that's okay. You don't have to. What you want to just remember here is whatever you do, one direction of travel only. Once we get it tight, I don't want to back it off a little bit and leave it, nor do I want to back it off and retighten it again. I would prefer with the silicone method, one direction of travel. I tighten it, I maybe put my wrench on it and get an eighth of a turn more, and then I let it sit. Leave that for 24 hours, and now you're going to have a leak-free solution there. And as I mentioned before, if you wanted to, you might wrap the plumber's tape around and then apply a little bit of silicone on that. I've seen that used, but it's really not necessarily necessary. I kind of prefer the either or silicone or the plumber's tape solution. But now you have a couple of solutions that will work. You know one that you probably shouldn't do. I hope this information was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I am technically Steve. It would technically help you to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'll see you later.